Let's look at a numerical example for our inverting amplifier configuration. So for this particular problem, what we want is we want our output voltage V0 to be equal to negative 1.25 volts when our input voltage VI is equal to 0 0.5 volts and our current I is equal to 50 microamps. And so up here in our circuit, we see the current I is defined through resistor R1. And so recall with our prefixes, microamps is times 10 to the minus six, so we have 50 times 10 to the minus six amps. And so of course what we're trying to solve for then is our values for resistors R1 and RF. So we wanna know what values of those resistors are gonna give us this desired behavior. And so because we've already analyzed our general configuration for the inverting condition, or our co inverting configuration, I should say, uh, we don't have to go back to square one with our ideal op amp analysis. We could just start with that equation. So we know for our inverting amplifier in general, so let's just say inverting amp, we know in general we have AC is equal to negative RF divided by R1. Well, in this case, we know that our desired gain we can get that from our input and output conditions because remember our closed loop gain AC is also equal to in general V out divided by VI. And we're told here that we want this output of negative 1.25 when our input is equal to 0 0.5. So from that we can see our desired closed loop gain is going to be negative 2.5 and that's going to be dimensionless because here we have our two uh, items in volts which will cancel out so we get a dimensionless gain as expected. So now we just equate these two equations for our closed loop gain and we see that we have negative RF over R1 is equal to negative 2.5 or of course we can get rid of our negative signs and just say that RF over R1 is equal to 2.5. Okay, so if we did not have this extra information about our current restriction, what we would do at this point is we could just choose one of these resistor values and then choose the other based on this restriction for our gain. But in this case, we have this I value, which is essentially setting the value of our R1 resistor. So our I equals 50 microamps is essentially setting the R1 value. And so we can see why that is because our V input is equal to I times R1. So let me go back up to our circuit to see that more clearly. So of course we could, we, as we have said before, we have a virtual ground at this point here. So really all along that, uh, this whole node, which is connected to our inverting terminal. So we know V equals zero here. So we could define this voltage as VI. So using Ohm's law then, we just have that that current is equal to V, uh, or sorry, the voltage is equal to I times R, which is what we have here. So from that, we know what the input voltage is and what that current is based on our two given conditions up here in the top right of the screen. So plugging in those values, we have that our R is equal to V I divided by the current I, so 0 0.5 volts divided by 50 times 10 to the minus six amps. And we get that that is equal to 10 K ohms. So if you plug that in, you'll get 10 times 10 to the third. So I've just gone ahead and reduced that to 10 K ohms. So now we can come back up to this equation here, knowing our R1 value, we can find the value for RF. So we can say RF is then going to be equal to 2.5 times R1. So of course that's just 2.5 times what we found in the previous line was our 10K for R1, which is going to give us 25K ohms. And so an important thing to note is because we already had this general relationship for our inverting amplifier configuration, we did not have to start over with our ideal op amp uh, properties and say we have zero current into our terminals, 
we have zero differential input voltage, we could come directly here and that made our analysis a lot quicker. So that's all for this example. Uh, we're going to look at some other configurations in future videos.